FM 94, The Dark. It is that time again. It's time to get to know a band we play here on The Dark and on the phone tonight. I'm talking to Reed Henry. He's with the band Never Say Die. And, of course, we're spinning their latest song called Like a Nightmare. And the story about this band, and I'm going to get it actually from Reed. First of all, let's get you involved in this, Reed. How you doing, first of all? How things going for you? I'm really good, man. Thanks so much for having me. All right, let's talk about the story of this band, Never Say Die. And I'm going to let you talk about it rather than me talk about it. How did the band actually all come about, or this project come about? Right, well, um, myself and the bass player for Never Say Die uh, used to be in a rock band called My Darkest Days. Um, We had a song called Point Start Dancing for a couple years that we uh, we would tour and kind of did our thing... uh, up until our singer, um, when our singer Matt Walsh, who's recently joined Three Days Grace, uh, at this time we were kind of like, we weren't sure exactly where we were going to go or what we were going to do. So Brendan and myself just kind of like, just uh, took some time to write and to just be musicians again and to reflect on what we'd done. And uh, we had the opportunity to meet Mike Langford and Dane Hartzell, um, the other members of Never Say Die. And, uh, and, just from jamming and writing ideas together, we kind of formed this band and uh, made the record ourselves, put it out, and now we're on tour in the United States again. So it's, it's, been, uh, it's been an incredible experience and definitely uh, something to, like when Matt quit and, and joined Three Days Grace, it presented an opportunity for me to challenge myself as a writer, as a singer, and as an artist in general. So I'm, I'm excited by the opportunity, and uh, it's, been, it's been an incredible response from my Darkest Days fans. So... We're really humble to be back out and also grateful for all of the support that, like, Matt has been a champion of this band from day one, so it's, it's been uh, instrumental having Three Days Grace behind us as well. Yeah, you know, yeah, I can, there's a lot of questions I want to ask any of this because, uh, <laughs> and, and, and I'm sure you've probably been asked it a lot. I'm sure a lot of different questions have gone your way. And, you know, I don't want to labor so much on my darkest days and Matt leaving and all that stuff, but right. I, I'm assuming that it was on good terms because I know his brother yeah. Brad is with the band Three Days Grace. I've interviewed Brad on these airwaves before. So it was awesome. obviously it was a, a natural selection for him to bring on yeah. his brother. Exactly. No, like, I mean, we were watching Matt for the first time with Three Days Grace was like, it's like watching one of your best friends playing the big leagues for the first time. And it's just like, yes. he, like it was an emotional experience, man. Like such a beautiful thing. We we're so proud of him. So, so I, I guess the question it's, with, 100% good. You know, so with the question with that being said, is after seeing him make the big leagues and doing that, mm-hmm. you guys are sitting on the sideline going, what the hell can we do? Because we still like going out and, and playing, right? Yeah, and, uh, and that was definitely part of it. Um, I'd always been writing. Um, I've been a songwriter since I was a kid. So to me, I, I saw it as an opportunity to be like, I bet, I bet I can flip this somehow and make, I, I can find a way to be an artist. I can find a way to be a writer. And to sing, and to be a singer, and to have you know a real rock band, and and uh, and seeing what he was doing with those guys, and seeing you know as we always have um, since the you know Three Days Grace was sort of a big band where we're from. Right. Looking up to the looking up to them again in a different context. Um, that's sort of what I meant by challenge myself. Like we saw what they were doing, and I'm like, you know, like I want to do that. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, why, why wouldn't yeah. you? They've had great success. I mean. Obviously, Absolutely. starting from the beginning where they are, we're back in the you know late '90s to where they are now today, and then with Matt being a part of that too. I'm assuming you have a chance yeah. to to correspond with Matt a lot in that. Is that helping you out with your current project right now? Yeah, so much, man. Like we uh, even right from the get go, like some of these songs were ideas that I had sort of started as riffs with Matt like Since You've Gone Away and a couple others, and just other songs that he had, sort of his input or his, um, just would have like criticisms or, you know, advice to give, sometimes on songs, but on other stuff too. And, and we, we, take his, uh, we take his opinions to heart. And certainly, uh, certainly he's been a, a positive influence on, on our career and, and what we're doing. So we're very grateful of that. Hey, let me ask this question, I guess. Is My Darkest Days just kind of on a break or are they kind of done? I mean, what, what's the deal on that, I guess? Well, like I said, Matt, myself, and, and Brennan and, uh, and Doug are, are very, very good friends. Obviously, right. Brennan and I are still in a band together. Uh, but, you know, like, we write really well together, and, and I hope that one day we'll make music again. But I, I don't think it's going to be for quite a while, because obviously we've, uh, we've gone full tilt at Never Say Die for the past year. 
kind of in the shadows up until recently when we put it on the internet and sort of announced that we were a thing. But right. we've, we put a lot of energy and time and creative effort into this. So I want to see it do well, and I want to bring it to its full fruition. All right. And, uh, and maybe we'll make music together again as My Darkest Days, but we'll definitely make music again together as friends because... We just love doing it. So. Well, I tell you what, you had a great run with My Darkest Days, especially with Porn Star yeah, sure. Dancing, a song that hit the top <laughs> of the charts. And, and that's got to be really cool for right. you because you know what it's like to be at the top, don't you? Absolutely. And it's got to make you, I believe, strive to get to that point. And let me ask you this question. With the band name Never Say Die, what's the what's the name behind it? I'm, I'm thinking I know what it is, but what is it? Yeah, I mean, I hope it's too on the nose. I that uh, in spite of everything that's happened and uh, and everything that will happen, you know, you got to just keep moving on. You got to persevere and, and just never quit, never stop, and, and never, you know, never give up on what you love. Right. That's cool. What's up with you Canadian guys, by the way, kicking some ass in rock, by the way, huh? What's up with that? I mean, uh, down here in the States, yeah, we got some cool bands in that, but Canada knows how to do active rock. Why is that? <laughs> I don't know, man. But we're, I'm, I'm very grateful to be down here because there's definitely so much of a, of a culture for active rock in the United States that, that we, we don't have as much of in Canada, so maybe that's why. But there's a ton of bands, though, that are from Canada in the active rock world, isn't there? True. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I just... There's theory, Nickelback, yeah. uh, three, three Days Grace, of course. Yeah, yeah. Theory of a Dead Man, even if you didn't mention I mean, yep. yeah, there's, there's just sure. so many that have done so well, which is so awesome to see. and. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I, I got to ask you the old proverbial question. Since I'm from Minnesota, I get it asked all the time. What am I going to ask you, Reed? <laughs> Is it about strippers? Or... <laughs> no, actually, it wasn't. I well, I was thinking more clean than that. Are you a hockey okay, fan? Okay. Are you a hockey fan? Yes. Did you yes, grow I up? Am. Yes. Okay. Yes, I am. So, where's your and allegiance to? Well. Toronto Maple Leafs. And you're probably excited because they're right now leading two games to one over the Capitals. Beyond words, you cannot understand. Actually, maybe you can because well, Minnesota's always had a pretty good team, though. Yeah, you didn't. You guys never went through what we went through of just a decade of sucking. Well, we did go through a, almost a decade of having no team, though. So That's true. We That's lost. True. We lost the North Stars, and then the Wild came back in two thousand. Uh, are you? Kick, right. I know you guys are currently out on tour in New, in, in New York. I think you said today. Yeah. Are you kicking yourselves that you're not back in Toronto watching this? <laughs> Well, well, we'll watch it on the internet. I'm not going to miss a moment, but unless we have to be on stage. <laughs> but otherwise, I won't miss a moment of playoff hockey for sure. Okay, so let me let's I'm take since that. since you're yeah exactly you know what and the other thing too and it's proven there's studies out there that mm. hockey and rock music fans go hand in hand. It's proven. I believe it, it. It is well actually there's a lot of studies done that I've done some research on, and it is it's it's like fifty sixty percent of people that go to hockey games also mm-hmm. like rock music. So, and cool. if you if you ever go to a if you've gone to some games, what are they playing there? They're not playing uh, Katy Perry yeah. and that. They're playing rock. Very true. Very now, true. Now, I'm 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 wondering if you guys have been played in an arena or two so far at games with uh, uh, porn maybe porn no, star dancing? No. Definitely definitely porn star dancing, but I, I don't know if, if any of the new stuff has uh, has been uh, yet, yet to grace an arena for the PA. <laughs> I'd, I'd like that very much. A Toronto Maple Leafs game. They played some like a nightmare. I'd be, be all right with that. I love this song, by the way. Like, I love this Thank song, so Like much. a Nightmare. In fact, it was part of our Rock in the Dark music poll, which you won, too, which was awesome. So you had Amazing. fans around here. Talk about the song, Like a Nightmare. What's the story behind that? Uh, like a Nightmare is a song about taking things too far. Um, sometimes it blows up in your face. Uh, it's... Definitely, I, I try not to define it. Like I have, a, you know, what it means to me. But there are definitely we met people like uh, um, veterans and service persons that uh, that you know have experienced post traumatic stress disorder, right. um, as well as uh, you know people with former addictions that, that have all said that have helped us, helped them. And so I mean, if, if if we make music that is able to reach out or emotionally affect somebody, then uh, you know, I don't want to take away from whatever that personal meaning is to somebody else, but it's definitely a song about getting through, um, you know, making it through your get, getting past your demons, I guess. Okay, cool. We're talking with uh, Reed Henry here. He's the vocalist, guitarist of the band Never Say Die. Uh, you said you're out on tour headlining right now. Who are you headlining with? 
Um, we are playing some headlining shows with some locals and just like cool local bands for the okay. two weeks, three weeks. And then uh, we're going to be on tour with a band called Message from Sylvia. Yes. For another cool new band. Very cool. They're out of Wyoming. They used to be called First Decree, and I think they lost their lead singer too, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yep. So then they decided we got to change the name and uh, kind of what you guys did too. So yeah. well, let's talk about Definitely. that touring and that you're doing that right now. And of course, you did that with my darkest days a little bit and that. Uh, if Very you much. had, if you had to put your ultimate band bill together now, so now since it's your band, who would you like to go out on tour with? Oh man, uh, I'm such a huge Corn fan. Okay. It would be incredible to tour with them. I'm such a huge Metallica fan. Uh, I think we all are for sure. Deftones, another band that we'd love to go on tour with. Nice. Um, Got my fingers crossed for three days, Grace. <laughs> Hopefully we go on tour with them. Have you ever played uh, with them yet? No, not as Never Say Die. We wow. played lots and lots of shows with them, obviously, with Matt, with My Darkest Days. Yeah. But, uh, I, Matt came and sang with us. He sang Porn Star Dancing with us in Toronto. And, I saw uh, that. And, and watched the show. So I think uh, he's a believer, so hopefully we can hopefully we can make it happen. But definitely, um, definitely three days, Grace would be... Be a lot of a lot of fun. I saw that uh, video on Facebook on your site. That was awesome. That was uh, that must cool. have been a cool night for you guys. Yeah, it's been a minute since we sang it together on stage, and it was kind of cool seeing it come full circle. It was a lot of fun, and uh, and we had a good time. Plus, it's just it's nice to see your friends after you've been on tour for like we were out since January, so it's nice to come home for not too long, you know, just a couple of days and, and play a show. Right, that was a lot of fun. Hey, what's what's the reaction right now in the U.S. about the new song? Uh, it's been incredible. We're really, really excited and super flattered. Thank you so much for playing it. Um, we're we're really excited that people are kind of uh, getting behind it and it's it's getting some excitement. So that's definitely it. Feels like there's a buzz in a good way. So we're we're at the edge of our seat. We're uh, very excited. And I, you mentioned obviously before we started this interview that you've actually uh, been up to Minnesota with my darkest days, but never mm -hmm. never say die yet. Uh, can Not we yet. make can we make that happen sometime? We can make that happen. <laughs> uh, what are the we can definitely make that happen? I guess from your perspective and being with the band, my darkest days. What are the fans like here in Minnesota? If you can remember. <laughs> oh, I remember. Uh, yeah, there's definitely a few nights where I remember getting to the venue, but I don't remember leaving the venue. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Every time I go to Minnesota, it seems like that happens. There's some <laughs> vague memory of a Target Center with Nickelback. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, I, guess, I remember getting there. Don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> what's I guess what what what's it like for the Minnesota fans for you guys? What have you noticed out of Minnesota fans? Um just, you know, a lot like where we're from. People like to drink, they like rock music loud and right. you know. So it's it's uh Sky's the limit, obviously. Really, really hot girls. Really pretty girls. Ah, you like that, there you yeah. Go. They're yeah, hot. I do remember that. That is something that definitely sticks out in Minnesota. You're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Minnesota. You just got to come there when it's is. summertime, so there's not as much clothing as in the wintertime, I guess. So. That's true. Well, we will be coming in the summertime, so I feel like... Uh, that yeah. could happen, right? Hey, there what's what's the upcoming uh, deal for you guys, project-wise? What, what are you working on right now, I guess? Uh... Like musically, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, I've been like we've all been writing since we went on tour. Um, I have like like eight or nine songs that, that we've been kind of working on that I think we're we're all pretty excited about. I don't know, you know, we're going to be definitely supporting this record for for the time being and for the definitely for the um, foreseeable future. But we've got a lot of ideas on the back burner. We're pretty excited about, and uh, and I am excited to try and find a way to just. I mean, I have a demo rig for for the way we can kind of record while we're on tour, but. The longer we're on tour, we'd like to, as we sort of furnish the van better, if you will, sort of set up uh, a more of a built-in um, studio space, and you know, to find a way to expand that and make it even more uh, intricate and more um, polished. I guess. Yeah, but that's cool. Even for now, just having the laptops out and the guitar acoustic guitars out, it's been uh, been a lot of fun. Especially just being on tour, it's it's 24 hours a day, right? So right. even though maybe part of the day we're not. Um, we're not playing or doing anything promotion-wise or have to be somewhere to do anything. A lot of that dead time just turns into writing. So it's uh, it's really, I've always found it to be beneficial in that regard, too. Plus, just having Inspirato, like traveling around and seeing new things, meeting new people every day. Um, those new experiences are a, kind of fuel your writing in, in ways that sitting in a rehearsal space in Nashville or something kind of doesn't give you the same sort of inspiration you know right i hear you who does the driving for you guys you all switch off 
Brandon has done so far all of the driving, which is incredible. Brandon has driven 25,000 miles. Wow. And, and he's the reason we are still alive, because if I was driving, we totally wouldn't be. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, how, shout out to shout out to Brandon McMillan on that one. Absolutely. How many uh, flat tires or how many uh, mechanical issues have you had? Uh, we had to zip zip tie part of the van <laughs> to itself. But other than that, we've been so far good. We change our oil pretty regularly, so it's, yeah. I mean, we haven't had anything. Knock on wood, we haven't had any trouble van trouble yet. Good to other say. than like a, a piece of metal came off, and Brandon just got under there and zip tied it back to where it was on before. <laughs> But, yeah, it's still there, so that was, like, two months ago. Hey, as long as you're not driving a commercial vehicle, you'll probably be safe. But I tell yeah, you what, yeah, we're good. It's going to be fine. Stay out of that area because you get those commercial guys, those commercial police, they're, they're, they're sticklers. Oh, they, yeah. You know, those bus guys, oh, yeah. they're going to up and down you. Where's your logbook, sir? Oh, it's been good. We've, uh, we've been lucky. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, I'm going to let you go here, but uh, how can people get more information about the band Never Say Die? Where can they find out information from you? You can check us out at neversaydie.ca, which has all of the links to our social media on it, uh, or on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you, if you name it, we got it. But um, you can find all those links at neversaydie.ca. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, thanks so much for your time. We're going to play your latest song right now. You cool with that? Awesome. Thank you. All right, we're going to spin it right now. Once again, that is the man from Never Say Die. Yeah, that's right. That's Reed Henry. And their latest song is called Like a Nightmare. You're hearing it right now. It's on the dark. It's on FM 94.